What's up everyone, this is Donnie aka Elevated with Dota Alchemy bringing you another video today and this one's going to be a little different because I just wanted to go over this brand new feature that Dota just launched, uh, Valve rather, the Dota team at Valve just launched and I think it's actually pretty amazing so I just wanted to kind of give my thoughts on it and talk about it a little bit um, and talk about the positives and the negatives of this new app. So basically there is a Dota Plus app. And it's called Dota Pro Circuit. You can click on it right here. Uh, you can find it in the App Store. But the reason I called it Dota Plus app is because the one big negative to this app, I'm just gonna put this right out there, is that you have to have Dota Plus to use this. I tried logging in with an account that does not have Dota Plus on it, and you literally can't view any of the features at all, zero. It just prompts you to get Dota Plus and that's it. And I think that that is pretty terrible. Um, I think that you might as well give people access to like the game tracker, being able to see what's going on. You can't use it for some of the other features, but I think having like a, you know, a track Dota or some way to just kind of see what's going on in the games is pretty useful. And I don't know, I, I feel like they should just give that to all their users. But then again, this is Valve. They don't do anything without a purpose in mind as a business. And so... It is linked to Dota Plus, so if you don't have Dota Plus, you can't use this app, but if you do have Dota Plus, then you don't have to pay anything extra for it and you just get access to it um, for free. Let's call it free. Uh, anyway, I just wanted to go over the features of it and then talk about a couple of things as well. So Dota Pro Circuit, a Dota Plus companion app. Dota Plus subscribers can win shards with match predictions, compete for shards in the fantasy challenge, and follow the Dota Pro Circuit action in real time, staying up to date with news on your favorite teams and players at every DPC event. Yeah, so it's the promised stuff that was part of Dota Plus, which is that we we're supposed to get all of these extra features regarding pro the professional scene. And so we finally have it. It's part of, it's an app now, it's on your phone, which is actually really cool because if you think about it, you can't take, <laughs> you can't take Dota with you off your computer. And I would assume that this is also gonna tie into battle passes down the line because that was one thing I really noticed about their previous fantasy system with the battle passes is that if you weren't at a computer and you needed to make an adjustment and let's say you're at the event, maybe you're at TI and you wanna change a roster around, you don't have your computer there, you can't. Um, and so that was one of the big problems with the fantasy system that they had for the battle passes and that is probably going to be solved i'm just speculating but i would imagine that they're going to tie everything into dota plus from now on and that would mean that you can just do stuff on your phone which is how all other fantasy sports work and definitely a step in the right direction for that so if we go over a few of the features we have a custom news feed and this is really cool uh, you can tag your favorite teams so you can follow specific teams and players even to feature them prominently in your news feed. You'll get real-time updates on match results, roster changes, upcoming matches. You can even check out player profiles for more in-depth info on team history, along with achievements and earnings for the current DPC season. And so it will literally tell you one of the newest updates is that Ana rejoined OG. So it actually tracks this. It's like a legitimate sports news feed for Dota players, and that is super cool just because I know a lot of us fiend this stuff anyway, and now you all have access to that. And if you click on Ana, it gives you his profile. It shows what his full name is, um, what teams he's been on, the role he plays, where he's from. And that brings us to section number two, which is predictions. Predictions are a new part. It's another thing that was promised. We were supposed to be able to, you know, do DPC predictions and, and this kind of stuff. So now we can. Test your powers of prediction by correctly choosing the winner of any DPC match, no matter where you are. Back up your call by wagering your personal shards. Choose wisely. A win will pay out along the odds, but a loss is sure to deplete your hard-earned stash. So you can bet your dota plus shards which currently don't have the most uses since there aren't that many sets you know there's a decent amount but there's not there's not enough to satisfy people who grind a lot so this is actually a cool way to utilize them you can wager them like you're betting except you don't spend any of your your actual money 
fantasy. This is the thing that I'm the most excited about uh, because I have been a huge fantasy player for football and I've even played fantasy baseball. I've played fantasy basketball and fantasy Dota has been something that I've been very into in the last couple battle passes as well. And so now we can actually play fantasy like a regular sport. Uh, don't just watch the DPC field your own team of champions in the fantasy challenge, build your roster and compete against your friends and the entire world to score the most points. You'll stack up a nice pile of shards if your roster outperforms the rest of the competition. And you can actually, if you go to your own profile, you can see that it actually keeps track of your top finishes, whether you're up in the top 50%, the 75th percentile, the 90th percentile, and keeps track of how many shards you've earned over the course of your fantasy career. So that's pretty cool as well. You know, there's a little bit of a leaderboard and you can see who is the best fantasy player globally from what it looks like, um, as well as among your friends. Uh, and so that just adds a little bit of extra, a little value to watching tournaments. You get to see how teams are playing. It helps you figure out your fantasy roster from one day to the next. Um, okay, so tournaments. The tournament tab is your home for info on every Dota Pro Circuit event. In addition to overall DPC standings, you can find details on participating teams, event standings, and match details, including a net worth graph, hero stats, and more. As the tournament progresses, you'll have access to updates on group stage, playoff matchups with complete results. You can get event info as far as the overview of the event, team list, prize pool, scheduling information. Uh, you can follow the group stages. You can look at the playoff bracket and you can look at the results of previous Dota Pro Circuit um, tournaments as well of any match that is happening currently or in the past. I think that Valve is definitely going a step in the right direction with this. I think this is a very cool thing to add to the Dota Pro Circuit. It makes it more I don't know, somehow it, it almost legitimizes it even more than it already is with the money because it gives us a whole system to follow and be fans of the Dota Pro Circuit. And that's just makes me very happy because it feels like they are just continuing to invest in the Dota Pro Circuit in its longevity. They're still investing in developing the DPC. They're still investing in making a fan and viewer experience that people will like and enjoy. And this is a crazy step for them to make kind of out of the blue but you can see here if we look at the actual match details it gives you a live mini map so this is something that dota pro uh track dota has um net worth graph you can keep track of how the game is going it gives you match info like the kdas the net worth that kind of stuff the lineup who's playing what um who's on which team the picks and bands so you can actually keep track of all this match info on your phone. All this stuff makes me super happy. I'm very, very excited that Valve is investing this much attention in developing the DPC further. The only thing I will say is that I'm a little sad that it is tied to Dota Plus just because I feel like it does alienate a large portion of the population who would enjoy at least being able to follow their teams if they couldn't you know, use like the betting or the fantasy systems. With that being said, Maybe let's go ahead and build ourselves a little bit of a fantasy roster together. Uh, just real quick, I'll give you sort of my thoughts on how to go about doing that. This is the first place to start when you are building a fantasy roster. All right, so let's go ahead and open up. So you can see that we have fantasy for various events in the past. We're going to go into the Dream League one because it's the one we can actually play, play fantasy for. So... We have ourselves a roster. We have scores. This is my total score. And then there's rankings of people. Well, you can filter to just your Steam friends if you want. But let's go ahead and build ourselves a roster, a fantasy roster. We look at the scoring. This is also pretty important. Um, details kills are 0.3 deaths are minus 0.3 a cs is 0 0.003 gpm is 0 0.002 power kills are one roshan kills are one team fight participation is three wards planted is 0.5 camp stacked is 0.5 runes grabbed is 0.25 
First Blood is worth 4 points, and Stuns are worth 0.05. Team Fight Participation, I believe, is scored out of 3. So if you show up for every single team fight, if you are if you have 100% kill participation or team fight participation, you get three points. Um, and then it is kind of scaled from there based on how high your team fight participation was. The rest of it is pretty self-explanatory. If you kill a tower, you get one point. If you get a kill, you get 0.3 points. Um, so 10 kills in a game would give you three points on that particular player. And this is all done on a player-by-player -player basis. So... Um, you can see that you can earn shards for qualifiers and main events, depending on where you place on the leaderboard, which is pretty cool. It will be four cores, two mids, and four supports for 10 players total. For each day, you earn points for your top two cores, your top mid, and your top two supports. So only five of the players that you're playing will earn you points, uh, which gives you some leeway as far as people you know, maybe just not showing up and getting blown out in a couple of games or winning too fast in a couple of games and maybe not earning as many points. When adding a player to your roster, they are locked in until they are eliminated, at which point the slot is cleared and you can add a new player. Okay, so interesting. It looks like we're going to go ahead and try this out. We're going to go to our roster. Let's go ahead and I like to personally start with supports because I think that supports are a little bit easier to read. Position five is one of the best supports to play in fantasy because they place the wards most of the time. Um, so I like to start kind of there and then uh, adjust based on what I'm seeing in the tournament. Um, anyway, okay, so let's go ahead and pick our supports. Um, and just for the sake of this video, we are going to pick supports that are playing on the first day. So out of those eight teams, if we're looking at how fantasy is scored, we want to be picking probably the five because they're going to be doing a lot of stacking and ward planting. Um, the four, on the other hand, probably going to have more stuns. They have higher potential for first blood, most likely, but first blood is a little bit hard to gauge usually. Um, the CS and GPM is kind of irrelevant. Deaths is pretty important. Again, I almost feel like sometimes the five is gonna die less because they're gonna be on the outskirts of fights more, but a lot of times you will see like a Crystal Maiden or a Bane dying like 12 times in a game. So maybe the five is not the one that you wanna pick for that. However, I think generally speaking from my experience in fantasy, wards tends to be the highest point getter across the board. If you really want to get hardcore about this, you know, you could go into Dota buff. You could look at the meta of the tournament. We go to Dream League. We can see, okay, what are people picking? What heroes are people picking? Uh, Oracle, lots of Bane, lots of Shadow Shaman. Um, I believe Roots count as stuns, but I am not totally sure. So that is something that would kind of need to be clarified. I'm, I'm pretty sure that they do. So if we look at this, you know, I'm not going to go super in depth because this video could be like hours long. You look at a lot of the popular supports. So Oracle, Bane, Shadow Shaman, all of which have stuns. You count Root as one of them and Sleep as one of them. Um, and of course, Fiend's Grip as well. Then Leshrac sometimes is a support, also a stun. I mean, it's, it's a decent split between fours and fives. Shadow Shaman is mostly played as a four. Uh, Bane mostly played as a five. Oracle mostly plays a five. I'd say the stun majority is probably going to go to probably going to go to the the fours. But as far as the ward placement, you're going to go with the fives. And because fives have quite a bit of stun, I'm probably just going to be picking fives in general anyway. Um, but there are also some heroes that tend to get a lot of kills, like Oracle. So I think whoever plays Oracle on a team is probably a really good person to play just because Oracle sometimes goes off and snipes a bunch of kills. They don't die a lot, uh, even though they do get targeted because they have so many defensive abilities. And the good Oracles are very, very careful with their positioning. Um, so anyway, I think that for this one, I'd probably be picking people from the teams that I think are going to do quite well, but play in maybe somewhat longer games than normal. Um, just by nature of how they play, I think that people like people on Evil Geniuses are reasonably good for that. Um, but we're not going to pick any of them, obviously, because we want to be uh, playing the, the people that are going to be playing tomorrow. So 
I'm definitely targeting people from secret because I think they're going to win. So their players are going to do very well. I'm going to pick people from LGD because I think they're going to win also. I think their players are going to do very well. Also, they have one of the best supporting duos in terms of both skill and fantasy. So I may end up even playing FY and Xnova from PSG LGD. Okay, so we're going to lock in our changes. So those players are locked. So anyway, basically it just goes on from there and you can, you know, again, do a bunch of research through looking at the hero stats and who's good, what people are playing and figuring out what cores you want to play based off of that and what mids you want to play. Anyway, I won't bore you with too much more fantasy stuff. I just wanted to share a brief overview of the app and the fantasy involved. And thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comment section below if you'd like me to do more fantasy content or go more in depth about how I build my fantasy lineups. Um, and I'd be happy to make content like that. But in the meantime, if you have Dota Plus, enjoy the app. If you don't, I'm sorry. I kind of wish that Valve would open it up to everybody. Anyway, it's just another reason to get it if, financial, uh, if your financial situation is in a good spot and maybe this will put you over the edge. But yeah, let me know in the comment section below what you think about this new app, the Dota Pro Circuit app, and the fact that it's tied to Dota Plus. Let me know what you like about it or don't like about it in the comment section, and we will see you in the next video. Hello everyone, and thank you for watching the video. We genuinely appreciate your time and attention spent with us here on the YouTube channel. 